Hey, what's up? This is DT here again with another one. Welcome back if you've seen my vids before, and if this is your first video, then Idaishaimase! Because today I'm going to personally get my own car re registered at the LTO or Land Transportation Office. Now, the one that services my area is the one in Yokohama. There are LTOs all over Japan. In fact, you can tell where someone gets their car registered or certified by looking at their license plate. It's actually the kanji right before the actual 500 or 300 number up top. Just the other day I saw an Okinawa license plate out here in Yokosuka like, how did this car even get here? Did it swim here or something? That was weird, but I ain't lying. Anyway, as you can see, I'm driving and Mama T is recording. And I am for reals going to show you how to not only get to this particular LTO, but where to go when you get inside and what they do with your paperwork. Yes, the entire process. And with that, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below or the small square at the bottom right corner. Okay, so in my particular case, I am driving from Yokosuka proper or Yokosuka Chuo and getting on the bridge here. Paying my 210 yen. Driving on a Yoko Yoko Road. I am going to go all the way past exit 1. Not getting off at exit 1. You could get off at exit 1, but it'll take much longer to get there. Okay, so let's talk brass tacks here, okay? 1. Before you even get in your car to go to the LTO, or to send someone else to go to the LTO for you, make sure you have all your paperwork in order. Don't worry, I'm going to go into great detail because that's what I do. No kind ofs or something likes. I'm going to tell you exactly how this works because that's how we roll on my channel. Not like those other guys. <laughs> the first obvious thing to do is to make sure that you've already paid off your liability insurance for the car. You won't get anything done if that is not paid. Also, your JCI or Japanese compulsory insurance to cover you if you cause bodily damage to someone, make sure that's paid too. Because at the end of the day, no matter what brought you here, your end goal is to get a new JCI sticker on your car. Also, it would greatly help if you had a past inspection sheet from a certified shop. This will greatly reduce the amount of time you are going to be spending here. Trust me on this, and I will show you exactly what I mean later. Now, if you are US base affiliated, you must get a JCI inspection on base. Don't listen to what anyone else tells you. I have owned so many cars while in Japan, and I tried to get inspections elsewhere like the dealerships. Yes, they will inspect, and yes, they will make you pay, but you will not get the paperwork you need because you are a Y plate, and Y plates have to get inspected on base. The only exception that I've ever seen my entire time in Japan is in Okinawa because in Okinawa you can get your GOJ or Government of Japan inspection done at the BRO there or you can take it to a certified dealer out in town. Also in Okinawa you could do your LTO run also on base. Good. Moving forward, if this is a brand new car or you just bought it off someone and you're transferring ownership, you will need a bill of sale. Now, if you're coming here without a license plate, you have to get a rental plate from your local city hall. Additionally, if your car has never been registered to your address, you have to provide proof of sufficient parking for this vehicle. You will go to the police station in your district to get this. It's basically the biggest police station closest to your home. Koban or police boxes do not count. You will have to measure your parking spot at your home or rental property in centimeters and draw it out in the form they give you. Another scenario is if you are paying, let's say, 10,000 yen a month for an extra parking spot. That company leasing it to you will give you the paperwork stating that you are parking there legally and you can just hand that to the police. Either way, give this paperwork to the police and they will give you stamps, make you pay 
around 4,000 yen for processing and the turnaround for that paperwork to be picked up is usually around two days, so plan accordingly. So a car title is called a Shaken Sho in Japan. On it is the VIN number of the vehicle, your legal address in Japan, your name, the last inspection date, JCI expiration date, and the plate number, if the car is registered already. Now, if you just bought a car from a dealership, the car may or may not have a shock and show. That is okay. They will make one for you at the LTO. And if it did come with one, it's likely in the dealer's name anyway. However, this is when you need the next piece of paperwork, the bill of sale, or as the Japanese call it, Liyo Shusho. And it is to prove that you obtained the car via legal means and not in a fast and furious street race. Shout out to Dominic gang. But seriously, make sure you have all of these things at the very least. Now, I just passed exit one. After that, I'm getting into the left or middle lane. You can get into the right lane, but that's if you want to miss your exit or you want to jump on the dice in Kahin to get there faster. But I want to show you something on the way there. And if it's your first time, you can get turned around easily, even with Google Maps. So after driving for about 10 minutes past exit 1, you will see a sign that says Kami Kawai. Then get ready because Shimo Kawai is coming up. Take the Shimokuai exit and make it right at the fork. Now, as they say in Philly, you're gonna bang all the way straight. That means just drive straight. <laughs> this is gonna be for about 20 to 25 minutes, but I wanna show you something on the way. Okay, this is Lala Port Mall. This is what I wanted to show you. This should be on your left side when you're coming this way. You cannot miss it. It's a big mall. And shortly after this, about three to four blocks up, you will have to get ready to make a left. There is an auto box on the left corner. Make a left turn at this light onto Route 12. Then get ready to make a right. Nah, ah, 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 not there. Not at the do not air sign. Do you really want to get a ticket at the LTO? <laughs> Just joking, but I've seen this before. The actual entrance is like 10 meters from that. So make a right and then you go into the LTO. Park anywhere is okay, but you will have to come back later to get your car. So the year of this taping is 2020. Oh my god, what a year. And it seems that they changed the building way down there. That's the big building. It used to be building two, but now it's building one. But fear not, that's neither here nor there. And also, what the heck is that? Okay. Ooh, I want to get this thing registered. And for what means, am I right? Okay. 
Well, let's get back to that later. Now, every time you come here, you always, and I mean always, start at registration. This small building right here, this is where they will have you pay your weight tax, recycling tax if you are junking it, and receive a mini itinerary for what you have to do and where to go, and they will clip it on your paperwork. But before you go in, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm just joking. I got you with that one. <laughs> no, but seriously, make sure you have your liability insurance and your JCI paperwork, as well as any car inspection paperwork. They will especially want to see that. So let's go in. As you can see, I have to pay my weight tax in this building literally right outside of the one I'm in. Half of this building is plate issue and the other half is the tax counter. So after paying the weight tax, they're going to give me three stamps to give back to the registration folks. I give it to them, they apply it to my paperwork, make me validate the paperwork they prepared for me. I have to sign, date, and I have to pay again for the processing fee. So they just updated my shock and show in there. If you do not have one because it's from a dealership, make sure you show them your bill of sale. If not, your journey ends here. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. So they can make one for you or they might send you to another building to get it made because they used to make it a building too. It all depends on your situation. Also, if you didn't pay your road tax, you will pay that at another counter. And unfortunately, if you bought it off a dealer and your car is a really nice car, let's say an Aston Martin or a BMW or something really nice, and it's not a lemon, you will have to pay a consumption, or what we call it in the States, a luxury tax, just for having it. For example, I bought a BMW M6 many years ago, and I was told I had to pay 60,000 yen for this consumption tax. I almost lost my mind, but that was because I didn't pay it when I purchased the car. So, if you're in this situation, and just need some extra money so you don't have to make a second trip out here, don't call me. Instead, go outside of the LTO on foot, make a right and walk for about seven minutes, three minutes if you were pissed off like I was, and you will run into a family mart and a post office, also called a Yubin Kilku. Now, family mart is hit or miss with Westerners cards, but the post office will always take your card. Next, Return after wiping your tears and go into building one. There, you will give them your paperwork at the appropriate window. They will process it, give you another sheet with a barcode on it, and tell you to go get in the appropriate lane for inspection. As I said before, if you already have a past inspection, this is where you will be super happy because look at all of these cars. My lane is zero, so I had to drive around all the cars just to get to my lane. Also, the lanes are marked on the ground, but cars may be covering them. But from experience, I know at this LTO, lane zero is all the way on the left, second from the double zero lane. Now we sit and wait. For what? Okay. See those guys in the blue jumpsuits? They're eventually going to come to your vehicle. Sometimes they ask you to turn the engine off by saying, engine off, <laughs> or they don't. Either way, just turn it off when they approach you because they want to get underneath the hood to check out the engine tag. They may look at the VIN number. Even if you know that the VIN number is on the window, they don't care. They want to see the engine. So just let them so you can go on your way. Then they will take your paperwork and scan the barcode on it and punch some numbers in their handheld device. Now you just have to wait and slowly, and I do mean slowly, drive through this inspection warehouse, not stopping to get anything inspected unless instructed, but you will not because you have a past inspection. They all know your car has passed. Some guys in front of you may have to get out to check tire pressure, do headlight checks, etc. But just relax and let them do what they have to do. Slowly work your way out and then park your car.
go back to building one with your inspection results, putting your paperwork in the green box, or just hand it to them, and they will give you a brand new JCI sticker. And congrats, you did it! Now, if you came up here with temporary license plates, you will be directed to go to Plate Issue after this. In Building 1, they will draft up a new shock and show for you with a new license plate number on the document. You will see what that number is before you go into the inspection line. After the inspection line, you will go to Building 4 for Plate Issue. They will give you the number that is on your shock and show. You can get a designer plate if you donate 10,000 yen, but that's up to you and you will have to repeat part of this process because your shock and show already has a number on it. Ask me how I know all of this. I've either done it before or I tried to do it already. <laughs> so, now you know how to get your car registered for the first time in your name and how to recertify it every two years when a JCI expires. Now this video is not intended to take any LTO runners out of business. No, 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 no. Actually, after watching this, you still might want to prefer to have someone do it for you. However, you now have the knowledge to do it yourself if needed, and you know what your runner has to go through when they go to an LTO. So how about a tip? <laughs> or tip me, that'd be nice too. So thanks for watching, and I'm glad you stopped by, and I hope you gained something from this video. And with that, like, subscribe, more content on the way, and I'll see you on the next one. BT out.